Seth Freeman, CEO and Chief Investment Officer of EM Capital Management, joins us from San Francisco. Good to see you once again, Seth. Uh, so what about these Q3 GDP figures? How closely are you watching them, and uh, what are you expecting? Well, we're expecting a uh, decline in GDP, particularly the kind of estimates that were given out uh, earlier in the year by the finance minister. Uh, where do those numbers come from? They come from uh, earnings and a uh, somewhat slowdown in uh, consumption. Yeah, okay, so slowdown in consumption. Well, yeah, I guess a big story right now, though, over in India is about these high borrowing costs and also the weak rupee. What about these levels for the Indian currency? Is this going to hurt or help the Indian economy? Well, it definitely hurts the uh, Indian economy. India is a gross importer of uh, fuel and oil, and uh, if they're going to be paying in dollars, it's going to be much more expensive. Uh, so that's kind of a double whammy when we're seeing oil prices increase and the value of the rupee decline. Okay, so what does that mean for your, I guess, investment tactics in India? Are you mostly going long? Are you shorting anything? Uh, we really have a long and long-term view on India. Uh, we will selectively look at uh, undervalued companies, but our, our general philosophy and belief is that long-term India will uh, outperform uh, many other countries, uh, particularly the United States over the next 10 or 20 years. Uh, that being said, it's a, a, a classic situation where uh, when the country's down, stock prices are down, the rupee is down. Investors want to take a wait and see uh, wait, have a wait and see attitude. Uh, we yeah. actually believe that uh, you know this is a good time to consider uh, going in to the Indian market. Okay, so what are you buying then? Uh, well, we would be uh, looking at uh, some of the stocks that have really been oversold. Uh, you know, automobiles, for example. Uh, have slowed down, and uh, those stock prices have uh, gone down significantly. But in India, there really is a uh, abundant demand for most goods, except capital goods that have that have higher interest rates. Uh, that interest rates have affected because of higher uh, borrowing costs. The government has increased interest rates yeah. 12 times this year. Yeah, uh, it's trying yeah, to stem inflation. Yeah, you know, those high borrowing costs have really hampered a lot of sectors. And uh, one we've been talking about lately that's been in the headlines has been the airline sector, of course, with Kingfisher and, yes. uh, you know, Jet Airways and also SpiceJet, uh, all asking the government for some help. Help us with our loans, considering that these borrowing costs are, are so high. Uh, what do you think is going to happen to the sector? Are we going to see consolidation, considering the government is still against foreign carriers coming in to pick up any stakes in these uh, airlines? I don't see any real consolidation. Uh, each of these companies are uh, controlled by very uh, aggressive entrepreneurs, uh, long-term family interests. I think they'll just work it out. Uh, what's interesting about the India situation is it's really driven by fuel, uh, not by labor costs. Uh, the way AMR has said that uh, the reason for their bankruptcy is their inability to negotiate with pilots. Uh, airlines in India are not uh, experiencing uh, high labor costs as their fundamental problem. It, it's also difficult in India to gauge demand for different routes. Uh, uh, that being said, uh, ridership or uh, seats sold have uh, more than doubled over the last five years. So it's definitely a growth uh, industry. Okay, Seth, good talking to you today. Thanks for that. So that's uh, Seth Thank Freeman you. there of uh, EM Capital joining us from San Francisco.